Hi, I'm Marty. Almost anyone, anywhere can grow potted plants. Indoors, they help make a house a home, and they can improve indoor air quality. While outdoors, they accent the porch, the patio, the balcony, etc. Even where the soil is non-existent or the quality is poor. And you can even do container gardening of fruits and vegetables. And there's an advantage of portability. You can move the plants for sun or shade, or you can bring them in during cold weather. Here are some repotting tips to keep in mind. You want to repot when the plant looks like it's squeezed into the pot or the roots are visible at the edges. Then it's time. And a general rule with most plants is to repot every couple of years. Match the size of the plant to the container or the result will look odd. Here are some characteristics of good pots. You want to have a wide opening. You want to have drainage holes. And a saucer to catch the excess water to keep the roots from drowning. Choose a container that's about one size up from the current pot because too big of a change can slow the growth but that's okay if that's what you want. Now some plastic pots today don't have drainage holes in them, like this one, but you can drill some yourself, that's okay. Just like that. But if you can't do that, you can put a few inches of coarse gravel, styrofoam packing peanuts, or marbles before adding the soil. This gives the excess water a place to go, but keep in mind this also gives the roots less growing space. If you have high quality potting mix and no overwatering, you can just skip this. If the pot's going to be on the deck or patio, have something underneath the pot if the surface is prone to staining. For pots with holes, you can line the bottom of the pot with newspaper to keep the soil from getting out. For big, heavy pots that'll be hard to carry when full, put a wheeled plant caddy underneath before adding the soil. Make sure you can wheel the plant from the repotting location to its destination. You want to avoid stairs, steep slopes, etc. Okay, so what makes good soil? Well, it depends on the plant. Refer to the care instructions that came with it because it's best not to use garden soil. It's too heavy. Use a good quality potting mix, and one that's formulated for that plant type if possible. There are special formulas for African violets and cactus and succulents and so on, while compost makes excellent potting soil or a great addition to purchase potting mix. For orchids, use moistened bark instead of potting mix. You'll also want to keep in mind the look you're after. A single potted plant is great when you want to keep things simple, but for big visual impact, you could repot several individual plants of the same species in the same pot. Or you can always mix and match several different plants that look good together, either in the same pot or in separate containers. If you put different species in the same pot, make sure the care requirements are similar. Before you start repotting, obviously you want to have your plants ready in the location where you'll be working. Prepare your work surface. Use a potter's bench or a surface that can be hosed off, or line your work surface with newspaper or plastic. Wear gardening gloves. Keep your hands clean while working. Wear thick ones if you're working with cactus for safety. Have a spade, plenty of potting mix on hand, and if the potting mix is dry, pre-moisting it makes it a lot easier to handle. So what do you say we do some repotting? First thing you want to do is carefully remove the plant from the old pot. Cut away any dead or damaged or rotten roots, but avoid cutting healthy ones because that'll stunt the growth. And if you cut too many, you could kill the plant. Put enough potting mix in the new pot so at the top of the root ball will be slightly below the rim. You don't want to plant it any more deeply than it was in the old pot or you could kill the plant. If you have one plant, you want to center it in the pot. If you have several like we do here, experiment to find an attractive arrangement. backfill with just enough potting mix to cover the roots. Press down the potting mix just to remove any air pockets because you don't want to pack it. Now we water the plant and let it drain. If you want, you can cover the top of the soil surface with a layer of stones, mulch, or other material to help slow evaporation. But hold off on fertilizing for a month or two unless the potting soil doesn't have any fertilizer. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the care of potted plants. Proper sunlight is going to be crucial. The amount you need varies by the type of plant, so check your care instructions. The general rule for container gardening is that leafy plants like lettuce can tolerate more shade, but root crops and fruits need lots of sun. For house plants, make sure to avoid cold drafts. If sufficient light isn't available, you can always use a grow lamp. And another thing you'll want to do is check the soil moisture frequently. For outdoor plants, you'll want to check it daily in dry weather. Indoors, it's a good idea to check it every few days or so. And of course, you'll need to water your container plants regularly. Water requirements, like sun requirements, will vary. Container plants outdoors in dry weather may need daily watering. And 
keep in mind that if you have clay pots, they're porous, so you really have to watch for moisture loss. Wet the soil, not the leaves. Wetting the leaves isn't necessary. If the leaves are wet all the time, it's just an invitation for disease. Occasional misting is okay for most house plants if the room is really dry. Proper humidity levels help slow moisture loss from inside plants. Plants feed themselves via photosynthesis, but frequent watering leaches nutrients, so sometimes they'll need a little help. A general rule for many plants is to fertilize twice a month, but it's best to follow feeding instructions that came with the plant. Now let's talk about pest problems. Check for pests frequently on indoor and outdoor container plants and treat infestations promptly with an appropriate product. When it comes to cleaning your potted plants, we don't really need to worry about the outdoor plants. Mother Nature takes care of those for us. But dust blocks the sunlight required for photosynthesis on indoor plants. Never use just any household cleaning products. For most plants, a gentle shower spray or kitchen sink sprayer will do. But for fragile plants, you can wrap plastic wrap over the pot to keep the soil from falling out and then turn it upside down and swish the leaves in a bucket of water. Always use lukewarm water because temperature extremes can kill the plant. And if the plant's really dirty, you can wipe the leaves with a soft cloth and water and just let it drip dry. And a final safety note, keep plants out of the reach of kids and pets. Many plants are poisonous and even non-poisonous plants can cause illness if ingested. Follow these tips and your potted plants will be a living work of art too. I'm Marty and I'll see you on the next project.